Hi everyone, and thanks for joining us today. I'm Tim Brandwood, one of the co-founders of Digital Taxonomy. Over the last seven years, we've been developing a product called Codeit, which is a tool primarily used to code open-ended responses from quant surveys. Our aim has always been to speed up the coding process by utilizing cutting edge technology, such as machine learning, AI, and text analytics. So I think this puts us in a good position to talk today about GPT and its likely impact on the process of verbatim coding. First up, I think it's important we take a step back and remind ourselves of the purpose of coding and what we're trying to get out of it. In my opinion, the goal of coding is twofold. Firstly, we want to extract the themes expressed within a set of verbatim responses. Secondly, we want to quantify the incidence of these themes so we can measure them. And above all, it's important that we do this with accuracy and precision. Without accuracy, our data is unreliable and dangerous for the use in decision making. And without precision, our analysis will lack nuance and won't be meaningful. With ChatGPT breaking through this year, it's natural for us to wonder whether it can be used to perform the task of coding. Can it be used to accurately extract themes and quantify them with accuracy and precision? Does this finally mean the end of time consuming manual coding? Well, as is so often the case, the answer is yes and no. GPT is very good at summarizing text. In many ways, this is its primary purpose, to take a vast amount of text and condense it into a language model. So if you give it a set of verbatims and ask it to summarize the main themes found within, it'll do a decent job. It'll return a list of rich human-like phrases which encapsulate the themes it finds. Because ChatGPT is intended to be used as an interactive conversation, you can ask follow-up questions, request examples, and generally dig deeper into the data. So if your goal is to simply get a high level read of your data and get a sense of the main themes, then it's a really great tool. I'd argue it's much more effective than the commonly used approach of simply skimming through a set of verbatims, trying to get the gist of what they contain. However, this sort of analysis is still more qualitative than quantitative. If your goal is to produce a robust quantitative analysis, then things get a bit trickier. In our experiments, we've seen that ChatGPT typically only accurately categorizes around 20% of verbatims at an accuracy level of 80%. This is largely due to the fact that GPT is a language model, not a mathematical model. Its primary purpose is to generate text rather than to calculate numbers. So if you try and use it to quantify the themes in your data, you'll find that there are gaps where it has missed themes, you'll see it will miscategorize themes in some places. And often you'll find that the results you get are not consistently repeatable, which is clearly a problem when you're trying to do quantitative research and you need comparability and reliability. So the first positive here is that ChatGPT is doing something useful and it can help speed things up. It's reassuring, I think, that people will still need to be involved in the process. This is quite well-worn well territory. Lots of people have made the same point, namely that ChatGPT can give you some useful answers very quickly, but it can't give you a perfect finished result. It doesn't matter if you're writing a blog, generating some custom segments or coding some verbatim data, the approach is still the same. ChatGPT can take some of the grunt work out of a task, but you need to take its output, rework it, refine it and apply it intelligently. I think Richard Bowman, one of the authors of uh, the Prompt series of books, put it perfectly. Chat GPT is like an electric bike for your mind. You can go further, quicker, but you still need to pedal. In our product, Codeit, we've blended Chat GPT with a few other techniques in our toolkit to add a code frame builder tool to our coding UI. If you're starting a coding project from scratch, you can use this tool to automatically build a draft code frame and optionally autocode your data. As I mentioned before, ChatGPT cannot do a perfect, complete job, but it will provide a useful starting point. The job of the user, therefore, is to apply human judgment and expertise. They'll need to review and refine the code frame, as well as review the coding and manually code any items that the AI could not complete. I think this raises an important point. AI is now being embedded in many software products, but as people still need to be involved, then all the standard aspects of good software design still stand. It still needs to be accessible, efficient and intuitive for people to be able to harness these tools and get the most out of them. With so much noise around ChatGPT at the moment, you'd be forgiven for thinking that it's the only AI tool around. 
But of course, large language models and generative AI are just one technique amongst many in the AI landscape. Within the use case of coding, we think that custom machine learning models still have a huge part to play. For example, if you're running a tracking study, then data from previous waves can be used to train a predictive model that can be applied to subsequent waves. Or for ad hoc studies, you code a partial data set, such as an interim set of interviews, then use a machine learning model to help code subsequent interviews when they arrive. In our case, Codeit automatically builds a machine learning model using deep learning and a fine-tuning transformer architecture based on a set of previously coded verbatims. Those coded examples may have been generated by ChatGPT, as we saw earlier, or manually coded or tweaked by a human coder. Either way, the result is a trained model that can be used to automatically code new verbatims as they arrive. In our experiments, we've seen that a custom trained model will significantly outperform ChatGPT. A custom model might typically autocode 60% of new verbatims with an accuracy level of 90% versus ChatGPT's levels of 20% autocoding at an 80% accuracy level. So a custom model is more effective and more accurate than ChatGPT out of the box. If you think about it, it stands to reason. Coding to a particular code frame on a given survey is a specialist task, whereas ChatGPT is a general purpose tool. A model trained on focused examples that encapsulate the nuance, detail, and granularity required on a specific survey is bound to outperform a generic model that knows nothing of the specific requirements of the survey at hand. Of course, building a custom machine learning model is a specialist data science task, whereas ChatGPT is immediately accessible to all users of any technical ability. And this is why we need tools that harness the full range of AI methods and allow everyone in the industry to tap into the power of this technology. Of course, this is how things stand based on current technology and our understanding. Things are likely to change and develop over time, and nobody can predict where we might be in several years' time. However, there are a few things on the near-term horizon that we think will have an impact. The big tech companies are in an arms race trying to produce the best large language models. New technologies like GPT-4, Claude, Bard, and so on are likely to boost the usefulness of this technique. Harnessing interactivity, we think, will be key to unlocking further gains in this area. Generative AI seems to work best when there is a back and forth interaction between the user and the system. We need to develop techniques and tools that make it easier for the user to work iteratively in conjunction with the AI. And lastly, we think there is further gains to be had by fine-tuning large language models to a particular task. Rather than using the general purpose GPT model, it may be possible to achieve better performance using more specialist cut-down versions of GPT. So what can we conclude from what we've seen so far? Firstly, I think we can say it looks like ChatGPT will have a useful role to play in summarising verbatims and doing some of the initial heavy lifting. If you need high quality, reliable and meaningful quant data, then people will still need to be involved in the process. And this requires good tools to enable them to provide human oversight efficiently and effectively. And lastly, despite the hype, we need to remember that ChatGPT is not the only horse in town. Customised machine learning models are still more effective than ChatGPT for the task of coding. Lastly, I'd just like to end with a prediction. I think that all of these developments will ultimately enrich research and allow us to do more rather than simply replacing us all. In our work, we see the reality that verbatim responses are massively underutilised in quant research. Researchers will often avoid using open-ended questions in questionnaires, or verbatim data is collected and then simply ignored. So our belief is that as the tech progresses, people will be empowered rather than superseded, and we can start making better use of the data we have and doing better research as a result. And with that, I'd like to hand back to you, Ray, and see if we have any questions.